In this tutorial, I'm going to help you understand and interpret the results of a two-way ANOVA or a factorial. I'm also going to explain how to calculate the degrees of freedom. This tutorial is part of a larger playlist. And in that playlist, I introduce the idea of two-way ANOVA. I also describe in how to calculate a two-way ANOVA by hand or manually, as well as how to interpret the results, which this video is about. And there is a link to the playlist below. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to calculate the degrees of freedom of a two-way ANOVA, the mean square, which is an intermediate step, and also the F ratio. I'm also going to show you how to take the F ratio, interpret it, and determine whether to reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. So to review the data, I start out with a group of data, gender, score, and age group, and I've given a math test to a group of boys, girls, and different age groups, 10-year-olds, 11-year-olds, and 12-year-olds. And in the middle here is their test score. I want to determine is it gender or age group or both gender and age group that are impacting the test score. So I have two factors, gender and age. I have three different hypotheses or hypotheses. Anyway, gender will have no significant effect on student score is the first one. The second one is age will have no significant effect on student score. And the last one is, gender and age interaction will have no significant effect on student score. Now in a previous video, I actually calculated all the sum of squares, so if you need to learn that, please check out the playlist. So the first thing I want to discuss is degrees of freedom, and the first degree of freedom is sum of squares of the first factor, or gender. So I return to my mean table. I'm going to calculate sum of squares of the first factor, which is gender. I know I described and discussed how to derive the mean table in previous videos, but I wanted to step back a second and show you how I derived that mean table. So the very first thing I do is I organize the data into two groups, boy group and the girl group. Now I'm going to take the boys test scores and organize it by age groups. So I take the test scores for the 10 year olds. and I make one column. And I do the same thing for the other two age groups. I do the same thing with the girls' data now, and I'm gonna organize it by age group. So I'll have a column for the test scores for the 10-year-olds, the 11-year-olds, and the 12-year-olds. Let me put that data over there now. So I have these two tables, and I'm going to make a third table, which is going to be my mean table. I'm just going to have a bunch of averages in it. I'm using mean and average back and forth. So I have three columns, 10-year-old data, 11-year-old data, and 12-year-old data, and two rows, boys and girls. Now I am going to take the average or the mean of the test scores for the 10-year-olds. I'm going to do the same thing for the 11 year olds and the 12 year olds. And that is the first row of that table. Now I take the average boy data, average of all their test scores, which is 7.7. .7. I'll do the same thing for the girls test scores. I take the mean for each age group. And this is my second row. Now, the girls' average is 10.3. The average for all the 10-year-olds is 6.5. For all the 11-year-olds, the average is 8.5. For all the 12-year-olds, boys and girls both, the average is 12. And the grand mean, or the grand total mean, is 9. That is how I derive the three tables I use in this video. Now back to degrees of freedom. So the degrees of freedom for the first factor, gender, I take the number of rows minus one. So I have boys and girls, so I have two rows. So 
So it's 2 minus 1. And of course, that is equal to 1. So the degrees of freedom for the first factor is equal to 1. So now the second factor, degrees of freedom for the second factor, is 2. The way I calculate that is, I take the number of columns minus 1. So I have 3 columns. So 3 minus 1 is equal to 2. So the degrees of freedom for the second factor, which is age, is equal to 2. Now the degrees of freedom for the sum of squares within, or the error, a little tricky. I take the number of observations for each age group. So I n minus 1, which is 3 minus 1, and that is equal to 2. And I do that for each age group. It's always 2 in this case. Now I add all these up. So I take 2 for the 10-year-old group, boys, plus 2, plus 2, plus 2 for the 10-year-old girls, plus 2 for the 11-year-old girls, plus 2 for the 12-year-old girls, and this all adds up to 12. The sum of squares for both factors is 2. The way I calculate that is I take the first factor times the second factor. So I take 1 times 2. To be clear, I am just taking that 1 times the 2 for the second factor. And this is equal to 2. And all this adds up to 17, which is the sum of squares total degrees of freedom. Now I'm going to show you how to calculate the mean square as well as the F ratio. And how we interpret those results. If the F ratio falls within the red area, the rejection region, we reject the null hypothesis. If it falls into the green area, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. As I go through this, I'll also show you the SPSS output as well and how to interpret that. I'm going to calculate all the values in the top row first. The mean square is equal to sum of squares divided by the degrees of freedom, which is 32 divided by 1. 32 divided by 1 is equal to 32. Now I'm going to calculate the sum of squares within, mean square. I take 68 divided by 12. 68 divided by 12 is equal to 5.67. Now to calculate 5.64, I'm going to take the sum of squares of the first factor, the mean square of that, divided by the sum of squares within's mean square. 32 divided by 5.67. 32. 5.67, this is equal to 5.64. The 32 is the numerator, so that degree of freedom of 1 is also called the degree of freedom for the numerator. Since the 5.67 is the denominator on the denominator, its degree of freedom of 12 is called degree of freedom for the denominator. I build the result, I write it like this. I say the F distribution I have F, open parentheses, the degree of freedom for the numerator, which is 1. Then I have a comma. Then I write the degree of freedom for the denominator, which is 12. Close parentheses, and this is equal to 5.64, which is the F score. Then I write P is less than 0.05. That means I'm going to test it at the 95% confidence level. There's a table in the back of your stats book for F distributions, and I'll put it here. For the 95% confidence level, the table looks like this. Let me draw it in real quick. There it is. 
numbers across the top are degrees of freedom of the numerator. And the numbers down the side are the degrees of freedom of the denominator. So now, I take that 1, and that 1 there is the degrees of freedom of the numerator, and I use that column of data. Then I go down 12, which is degrees of freedom of the denominator, and across. And where those two intersect, that's my critical value. In this case, it's 4.75. So let me draw in my F distribution. So any value greater than 4.75, the critical value, I reject the null hypothesis. And 5.64 is greater than that, so I reject the null hypothesis. So reject the statement, gender will have no significant effect on student score. Probably does have impact, right? Now the SBSS state is easy to read. I just go across the table, and I see that P is equal to 0 0.035, and 0 0.035 is less than 0 0.05. So I would also reject the null hypothesis because there's only a 3.5% chance of getting these results by some random chance. Now I'm going to calculate the F score for the sum of scores of the second factor, which is age. The mean square is the sum of scores divided by the degrees of freedom, which is 93 divided by 2. 93 divided by 2 is equal to 46.5, 0. That divided by 5.67 is 8.20. Now I'll show you how to write out the notation for the F distribution. So write F open parentheses. Degrees of freedom of the numerator comes first, and that's 2, and I'll move that down, comma. The degrees of freedom of the denominator in this case, it's 12, close parentheses, and that's equal to 8.20. And then I write P is less than 0 0.05, which means 95% confidence. Now I will show you how to look this up in a F distribution table that's in the back of your statistics book, more than likely. So again, across the top are degrees of freedom of the numerator, and along the side are degrees of freedom of the denominator. The 2 is the degree of freedom of the numerator, so I go down the 2 column, right like that. And 12, I go down 12, which is the degrees of freedom of the denominator. And across, and where they intersect, that's my critical value, and in this case, it's 3.8. And let me draw back in my F distribution. So my critical value is 3.89. So any score greater than 3.89, I'm going to reject the null hypothesis. So in this case, the score is 8.20, the F score or F ratio. And so I reject the null hypothesis, which is age will have no significant impact on test scores. Now, if you use an SPSS, the output looks like this. So it gives you the exact p value. In this case, p is equal to 0 0.006, which obviously is less than 0 0.05. So again, this tells us to reject the null hypothesis. And there's a 0.6% chance of getting these results by some random chance. Next up is sum of squares both factors that row right there. So the mean square, I take sum of squares divided by 2 degrees of freedom, which is 7 divided by 2 is equal to 3.5. I take that 3.5 divided by 5.67, and this is equal to 0.62. I write this out as F, open parentheses, degrees of freedom of the numerator, in this case it's 2, comma, degrees of freedom of the denominator, which is 12, 
close parentheses, the equal sign, 0.62. is less than 0 0.05 that means I'm testing at a 95% confidence level and let's look this up now in the table. I use degrees of freedom of the numerator to find the appropriate column in this case it's 2 and degrees of freedom of the denominator which is 12 in this case so my critical value is 3.89 just like last time And 0.62 is less than 3.89, so it falls somewhere in this green region. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis. We fail to reject gender and age interaction will have no significant effect on student score. The actual p-value, if you use an SPSS, is p is equal to 0.556, which is greater than 0 0.05. So again, fail to reject the null hypothesis. We reject the first two null hypotheses that include the impact of gender and age. And we fail to reject the last one, the interaction of age and gender. So... Gender will have no significant effect on student score. It's rejected. You may even want to write out the alternative hypothesis, which is gender does have a significant effect on student score. The next hypothesis is rejected, which is age will have no significant effect on student score. You may want to write out the alternative hypothesis, which is age has a significant effect on student score. And the last hypothesis, gender and age interaction will have no significant effect on student score. We fail to reject that, and we kind of conclude that's probably a true statement. As always, share the knowledge, share the love, Facebook, Google+, and Twitter. The link to the playlist down below, as well as questions, comments, and like the video, please like me. And don't forget to subscribe.